Good day and welcome back to another week of the T-Bone Speaks podcast. I want to, as always, take a moment to thank each of our regular listeners uh, for spending your time with us each week and for our new listeners as well. Uh, I'm, of course, joined by my phenomenal host, Meredith Cooper-Jones, and we are practicing social distancing <laughs> in our new uh, studio. So, so what's up, Meredith? Not much. We're just, you know, practicing social distancing activities. We're getting called up. I think most people right now, we're a week into the offices, a lot more quiet. We're two weeks in. Yeah, we are, yeah. but most offices are probably, we did it, a I think, week. a week before yeah. everyone else. Um, so I think everybody's getting called up and starting to practice their social distancing I'm activities. Webi I'm webinared out. Yeah, <laughs> everyone is. I'm. Uh, my wife is worried about me. I've been sleeping uh 12 to 14 hours a day. Yeah. So You've I, never done that in your whole life. So so I think she called you yesterday and said, yeah. Meredith, you need to start showing up <laughs> to the house to work uh, so that you can, uh, so we took a, what was it, almost three miles this morning? Yeah. So we went on a walk this morning. We're um, trying to stay busy. We, we know you guys out there want to be busy, so we'll hopefully be getting more more content out to you. Well, I don't know how many of you guys out there are feeling like me where it's, just this um this malaise this overwhelmed this angriness this worry all of this and i think it's been catching up to me and um uh, going for that walk this morning was fantastic it yeah. was nice to breathe some air it was nice to see other people yeah. it was nice to have a conversation Although, you know, I was huffing and puffing, so I didn't talk very much. By the social distancing of staying six feet apart, he stayed six feet behind us. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> and he used the social distancing but, as his excuse to be so far behind. Yeah, but that was very easy for me to make. Yeah. It. I mean, I was, I was working hard to only be six feet behind everybody. <laughs> So back before when we could actually go to restaurants, a few weeks ago, uh, T-Bone and I were at lunch. We rarely get a lunch, so we were like, let's run over to Chipotle. And he was telling me about this article that he had read in Inc. Magazine. So let, I think that was really cool. Like, let's talk about how that relates to dentistry. Yeah, you know, uh, Chipotle, Taco yeah. Bell, and dentistry, right? <laughs> right. Uh, no, so I, I, was, I read this, this, ma this uh, article in Inc. Magazine, and I say when I read it, it was online yeah. <laughs> because I don't get Inc. Magazine. Uh, but it was, it was quite interesting, actually. It talked about how uh, Chipotle had came out of the gates uh, phenomenal and doing unbelievably well, and then they were hurting Taco Bell's business. Right. And then it talked about how Taco Bell had caught up and started hurting Chipotle's growth in their business. And then it talked about how, you know, it, and, and the focus of the article was how Chipotle then re, re came about, how they Revamped turned themselves. things yeah. around to, um, to then start beating Taco Bell again. And I thought it was quite interesting. Uh, I, th I thought it was unbelievably interesting, and I wanted to build a podcast around that. Yeah. I mean, I think we can relate it to um, turning things around in your practice or kind of reinvigorating your practice when things start to fall behind a little bit, or maybe you don't even, you're not moving forward. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of times what happens is, is and I thought about this. I said, man, I went to Chipotle, and they're all doing great. Yeah. Right? Uh, you know, minus a few food scares and things. But a lot of times when I, when you talk to dentists and you say, well, are you, you need to turn things around in your practice, they, they give you that look. Like, what do you mean? We're doing good. Yeah. I'm like, well, th but that's part of the problem, right? You don't know what would happen if another practice moved across the street or if a DSO came in around you. And I think that's, that is the number one challenge for most dentists is, is focusing on the future, not just, hey, it's going well, it's going well, it's going well, but what may happen. You know, it doesn't mean you're, because if I say you need to turn your practice around, it doesn't mean that you're declining or you're losing money. It just means that you become stagnant. Right. And to me, I think the real answer, what I, what I took from this article was how Chipotle reinvigorated themselves and how as dental, practice, dental practitioners, as practice owners, how we can reinvigorate ourselves. And uh, I mean, when we had this conversation, when I read this article, this COVID thing wasn't going on. Right. But I think it really kind of plays into what's going on right now in, that, in the sense that uh, 
uh, it's a great opportunity. We're sitting around doing a lot of nothing. How are we going to reinvigorate ourselves? What do we need to do? What can we do? And I think we should talk about that. Yeah. So a couple of the things they said that they used um, for Chipotle to make that push was modernization, talent, and emotionally intelligent marketing. So yeah. I think those are all things, three things we could start with. Absolutely. I mean, it is 2020, so I think modernization <laughs> is is kind of a given. We would like a restart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, right. I would like to press control, yeah. alt, delete yeah. <laughs> on 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Can so, I just unplug it and plug it In a it few back weeks, in? we'll be back into 2020. Right now, we're like not in a year. Oh. But um, Chipotle did things to like deliver. Yeah. You know, obviously they're not delivering, but they're using another company to make their services better. So right. they used companies like Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats. Um, they upgraded their app so people could order from their phone. They encourage mobile orders. They right. do like free promotions with yeah. mobile orders, but ultimately that's saving the people time right. and money if they're giving them free things. So that's giving them that push to want to order from them versus sitting in the line at Taco right. Bell. Yeah, you know, so I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, dentistry, we can't do delivery. Right. I mean, that... We offer a service, not a product, <laughs> most of the time. Right, but there's so much that we can learn, right? Right. At the end of the day, it's about modernization. Yeah. I, I've been talking about modernization for years now. Right. Um, uh, but, you know, we can't deliver dentistry. We can't, you know, we can have an app. But I don't know how great an app is. Yeah. And you can't really like mobile ordered <laughs> dentistry, yeah. right? But what can practices do to modernize? Yeah. Okay. So let, let's, let, let me talk about that a little bit. Okay. Um, so I call that dental, dental consumer or patient centric strategies. Okay. In other words, being strategic uh, that are patient focused. Okay. Right. So the first thing that comes to mind, and this is something that I'm not doing myself, but it came to my mind first was implementing a membership plan. In other words, we always talk about being less insurance focused and being able to draw in patients that don't have insurance. And a membership plan is a great way to consider doing that. Now, I personally don't have a lot of experience with membership plans, but I know that uh, friends of mine and practices that I trust have done very well with membership plans. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's one option, okay? In other words, that's very patient friendly, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, Another thing that, uh, that we do have experience with that has been working pretty well for us, and that's using a website chat. In other words, making it easy for our patients to communicate with us. Nobody wants to pick up the phone anymore, especially if right. you're at work, right? right? Like Meredith, I wouldn't like it if you're at work and I see you talking on the phone to some, you know, to making a, appointments, <laughs> making appointments, but I probably would never say anything if I right. walk by and you're on your computer yeah. doing it. Right. Right. So it's, it's kind of the same thing there. Yeah. Okay. So a website chat, uh, it allows your patients or your potential patients when they come to your office to ask questions, Mm -hmm. to request things, to communicate with you without having to communicate with you. And the truth is, is the way chat works is you can actually communicate with so many people at one time uh, doing it. So uh, having a website chat would be a certainly a great strategy as well. Uh, Another thing that we are doing that a lot of people have a lot of fear about is online scheduling. I think it's been great. And I would say that online scheduling is, you know, equivalent to the mobile ordering because it has been awesome for the team, awesome for the patients. I mean, there's so such little work into putting that on. And I think, I think there's a lot of unknown and fear around online scheduling. You know, we, I looked at it because it took me a long time to get on the online scheduling bandwagon, but I looked at it as, um, your patients just see your schedule. Right. Right. And it's so Scared far. you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But, but really online scheduling for us, the way we do online scheduling is, is we essentially let patients schedule new patient appointments. Mm-hmm. We have block times mm-hmm. that are available. And then we allow patients to schedule recalls. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we have block times where there are recalls yeah. appoint, available. And so we don't allow them to schedule like fillings and crowds right. because they don't right. know how much time that no. takes and all of that. And then we use it as an easy way. And then we get an immediate notification and then our team reaches out. So it's not like we just let them schedule and then don't see them right. till they show up. But, you know, we use that as a, a as an easy way for patients to come in. So instead of having that conversation, like what day works for you this time, that time, and it's not like they can choose Mm -hmm. nine o'clock or nine 15 or nine 20. It's, it's like blocks. Like in other words, I don't know our exact blocks, but nine o'clock or 10 30. It's not like you can choose something in between. So you kind of set those parameters uh, and it's worked out quite nicely for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Another area that I thought about uh, that we've been doing for a long time is digital communication. Uh, we use a program called Revenue Well in our practice. Uh, there are other programs like uh, Smile Reminder, Demand Force, Lighthouse, our friend Gina Dorfman at Yappy. So there's all these great products out there that allow you to communicate with your patients digitally. And that to me is things like uh, email, uh, uh, mass emails. Right. Uh, that could be things like follow-ups on treatment plans. That could be and should be things like recall reminders, uh, appointment reminders, just what I call staying top of mind. In other words, having an automated system that always lets your patients know you're still there that you still care about them. Whether they care about you or not may not may be a different story. Uh, but I think that's certainly uh, very important as well. And then something new that we've uh, put into our practice in the last six to nine months has been digital forms. Uh -huh. uh, that's allowing new patients to fill their forms in uh, on an iPad, in our case, or online, uh, doing consents, doing referrals, trying to get rid of a lot of the paper in our practice. And, and we're using Revenue Well Forms uh, to do that, uh, and it's worked out quite well. Uh, we started with a couple of iPads at the front, and we've, we've liked it so much that we've now put an iPad in every operatory in the practice so that way we can do our consents and we're slowly starting to move a lot of our stuff to iPad. That'd be a good episode to do maybe yeah. to bring Michelle in and talk about yeah. what we've moved to the iPads in the operatories and how that's working out. Yeah. And also with, since we've put these online, a lot of patients are doing them at home before they come in. Yeah. They're not flustered. They're not running late. And then they're having to sit there and fill out paperwork. It puts yeah. us behind. So it's really been beneficial. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and again, I think it also sends the message to patients that these are the things they're experiencing out in the real world, right? right. In, in normal, everyday. Yeah. And so it makes them realize that the dental practice is kind of keeping up or right. certainly remember a new patient to you is not a new patient to dentistry, generally right. speaking. So they've had a different experience somewhere. So you can kind of put them at ease that uh, you're definitely a modern practice and uh, a modern practice. Typically uh, people believe a modern practice is a better practice, whether that's true or not is a different story. And then of course, um, I put this in here, clinical technologies, yeah. things like CAD CAM, cone beam, uh, digital impressions, uh, things like lasers, all of mm -hmm. these technologies are a way to modernize. Uh, the ones I talked about earlier are certainly more affordable, uh, but uh, clinical technologies are important. I think more and more patients are expecting some of these things. So, you know, th those are some of the things that, uh, for the most part, we've been doing that I've been talking about for a long time uh, in terms of modernizing our practice. And, you know, I still have that saying. I remember sitting in high school <laughs> listening to the song, probably junior high school, to be quite honest with you. We're going to party like it's 1999. <laughs> and now we're 20 years past 1999. Yeah. So uh, it, it is uh, 2020. Right. So it's time, it's time that uh, dentistry enters that world. And there are so many products out there that do have a lot of room in our practice. And, and I, I want to be clear about this part. People hear all of this stuff and they get overwhelmed one by one. You know, make it a 12-month plan. Make it a 24-month plan. Maybe, you know, pick which of these is the most important to you right now. Which of these will make the most impact in your practice? And choose that one. Yeah. And get it going. And then come back and do the second one. And then come and do the third one. Don't try to do all of these things at one time. And I, I've lost sight of that because I've been doing so many of these things, certainly on the technology side, for 15 years or so. And some of this new technology for, you know, years. Yeah. So I have this advantage of showing the big picture, but I forget that we implemented everything one step at a time. So I want to give permission that it's okay to not have all of this in place. It's not okay to not have a plan to slowly and steadily get it in place. Yeah, and I think as you've gotten each thing in place, you've had to continue to grow. Um, just because we started digital communication, that was one step towards digital forms. Right, it was, you know, right. So it kind of goes in line and with And you trained other. your patients, right? right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, the first thing we'd said was the modernization of Chipotle trying to take over Taco Bell. Um, so the three things were modernization, talent, and emotionally intelligent marketing. So we'll move on to talent. Um, we've talked about this a lot. I yeah. think people are the problem, but they're also the solution. <laughs> um, so Chipotle said they had become stagnant and slowly lost its way. 
They brought in new blood, which brought fresh enthusiasm, and they also moved to a new headquarters. So I think those were both ways that they used the people that they had to build. Yeah, and I think um, there's a lot there's a lot there that can directly be translated to dentistry. Okay? Right. Uh, so uh, they had become stagnant. Mm-hmm. I think uh, a lot of us listening to this would agree that there are many parts of our practice that are stagnant. Uh, they had, you know, they had focused on their rapid growth and they had lost that 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 vision or that culture. And, and I would say for 100% certain, our practice had lost some of its vision and culture and direction over the last couple of years because yeah. we had just been focused on so many different things right. that we needed that time to get back in and really redefine who we were and what our mission and our charge was. And then um, they moved to a new headquarters. And so moving to a new headquarters... You know, you can move to a new office. You can reinvigorate your office with new stuff. And we happen to have redone a renovation over the last, mm-hmm. uh, what, what did it take us, almost two years to do yeah. our renovation? Yeah. You know, we slowly changed out all our old chairs. Right. The chairs I had were from 19 to 2000 when I opened my practice in 2001. Uh-huh. Um, so I, you know, they were at that point 17, 18 years old. Right. So we had updated that. Same with the cabinetry. The cabinetry yeah. I had, some of it was from 2000. Some of it was homemade stuff that we had, had built yeah. when we moved into the new building in 2008 uh you know and refreshing the tvs yeah. like all these things and and again i didn't come at it at looking at it as um getting it all done in one yeah. time i had to budget it out right i had to not just budget it out but also implement it out right and uh so then we you know we made some of those changes you know and i put some really nice stuff in our practice uh, and and we kind of did that, uh, but now let's come back to the people and the talent. Okay? Yeah, well, I just have one thing to say yeah, about absolutely. about remodeling the office is, I've seen patients in the dental chair. I've seen them in the consult room, and let me just tell you, the our consult rooms are beautiful, right. but they were much less money than the dental operatory. Yeah, is correct? no question. I have never had a patient walk in the dental operatory and say, "Oh, the chair is so beautiful," <laughs> right. but they walk in the consult, consult rooms room. and say, "This office is so beautiful." So it doesn't always take a ton of money no. to just update a few things. It's a lot of times it's just paint, right? Yeah, yeah. and I mean we did upholstering, we, right? Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to add that, that yeah, it's absolutely. not always having to go above and above, beyond all at once. Absolutely. And that's yeah. one of the key messages that I'm f- working on uh, being more clear about is not all at once, yeah. but having a plan. Right. And that's important. So when it comes to the people, I get a lot of grief about this one thing, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, I, I have said publicly and privately that um, having the same team members for too long can, not is, but can... Yeah. Uh, be a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And what I what I really mean by that is stagnancy, complacency. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, if 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 I have the same team members for 20 years, right. more than likely my practice is 20 years old. Right. And most of the things we're doing are 20 years old. And so every time we brought in somebody new, I always said, what were you doing at your old? It wasn't about spying, yeah. but I was just trying to get an idea. What are other people doing? What can we do right. better? What can we implement? And I think there's a lot of value in, in having turnover. And, and so many consultants out there try to say, how do you stop turnover? And, and I look at it very differently. I, I look at it as that if I'm not having turnover, that means that either... Either I'm unbelievably lucky and we're just, you know, yeah. or I'm making it too easy for my team members. I'm not pushing them hard enough or I'm not surrounding myself with people that are looking to grow. Right. And uh, so so I think there's a there's a distinct disadvantage in having the same team members for too long. Yeah. I firmly believe that. And especially team members in the same position. Right. I think sometimes yeah. they, as they grow with you and they've adapted and yeah. changed, that's totally different than having someone yeah. do the exact same job and yeah. not grow. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up, Meredith. That, that is a great point. Uh, I'm, 
I'm not saying you need to turn people over, right. but I'm saying that they need to turn over so, yeah. in some way. In right. other words, like let's. I'm going to use you as an yeah. example again. Uh, you came in as an intern. Yeah. Uh, we had you doing just sterilization at that time. Yeah. Then we made you an assistant, mm -hmm. and then we made you front office. So to me, that's turnover. Right. Even though you didn't turn over like physically, right. but your position turned over. Yes. Because when we moved you from an assistant to the front, that means we had to have somebody else in the back. So all it's not all about changing people, but the people changing positions as well right. so that they learn and now you're not even in the practice yeah. technically and now you're with uh, with 3d dentists so uh, that, that's kind of part of that employees too long in the same position uh -huh. i'm really glad you brought that up another area is not consistently and regularly coaching team members um you know i i, I gotta admit it's uh, too easy not to sometimes i think well i find that typically most team members across the board, aren't going to be asking for no, a lot of coaching. That's what okay? I say. It's just too easy and, to uh, let them run. <laughs> right. And, and yeah. so before you know it, it becomes the inmates running the asylum to a certain degree. And I'm not saying, saying that right. in a negative way, but we've got to consistently and regularly coach team members. And one way that I recommend, I've got two specific points on this. Uh, one is I recommend that you block off an afternoon every month to do clinical case presentations to your team members and you put up cases and you you try to dial everybody into diagnosing the same and having the verbiage in other words role-playing patient pictures and x-rays to see how everybody's diagnosing i think that's been super i've seen uh, i don't know if you've been in some of those meetings i've seen one or two but uh, i've seen the team members really engage yeah. because the front office have no idea what we're doing right uh, the hygienists have no idea what I'm doing on the clinical side, and the clinical team doesn't have an idea what the hygiene team's doing. And there's this broken disconnect between right. people. And I think having that afternoon together, it's not a meeting right. where we go over numbers it's and stuff. It's kind of like a walkthrough. It's, uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a coaching session. Yeah. It's, it's t and right now we're focused on really uh, calibrating everybody together. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing that I saw a lot of results with um, was doing some co telephone coaching. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that was we have the ability and we recall, uh, so we record uh, our inbound calls. And then uh, once a week, once every couple of weeks, or maybe during this afternoon meeting, we play these calls. And then it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. At first it's weird, but I promise it's not. It it's was, super helpful. Let me, we saw immediate, yeah. immediate improvement from the first time I did that. And nobody wanted to do it. They right. were all right. hated and it. And it's not about the way you're talking to people. I don't think it's about the way you're treating people. It's about the verbiage. It's it's the ums yeah. and the, the verbal diarrhea yeah. and, you know, not directly answering questions right. or, you know, allowing the, the, the callers to take ownership of the right. call when really the, the practice should be owning the right. call and directing patients. Yeah. So um, I think there's a lot of benefits in regular coaching yeah. of team members. Uh, here's another one that I'm a big believer in. Uh, I believe you need to bring in outside people for a different perspective. Mm -hmm. You may not like what they say and you may right. not put in what they say. Uh, but I think this is one of the things that we hear a lot at 3D Dentists when dentists bring the team members. They're, they're like, I just needed you. To, I've been saying the same thing. I right. just needed you to say it because then they believe it. Yes. Right. And it's the same for my team. I right. need I need Paul Homily to come in yeah. and train my team on the same things that my I've been training. My favorite is when you taught Sully something right. and then he told our team. Right. Exactly. <laughs> they were like, hey, Sully had this really good idea. He's like, that's my idea. Yeah, exactly. So that, but that's my best example. Of yeah. That. <laughs> so, um, so there's a value in bringing in right. outside people. And that outside person can be as simple as your rep. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, another team member from another office, another dentist, uh -huh. but probably not the same dentist that you always hang out with or the right. things like that. Just, I think there's, I, I find it a really good to just go places and hear what other people are doing. Or consultant. Uh, any, anything, yeah. you know, like I work with Holly Bryant right. uh, and uh, she's been, it's a very Great. different, yeah. different perspective, right? Yeah. And um, so I don't like a lot of what she says. <laughs> okay. But I also do pick and choose what we implement. And I also give her yeah. a little bit of leeway because I trust that, that she's going to help us get to a lot of the places. So, you know, get outside help. Okay, yeah. get, bring in outside help for another perspective. Uh, another thing that's very important to me when it comes to talent is creating the culture of safe to fail. I always use you yeah. as an example yeah. of this, right? <laughs> uh, and uh, and 
we got to get past this thing where we want people not to make mistakes. Right. You know, I hear it all the time when I speak is, you know, you're refreshing. You, you show your failures. I'm like, of course, we learn the best from right. our mistakes. And then I always turn the conversation around and say, so how do you let your team fail? Right. And then they always have this look. And, and I think we have to create this culture where it's okay to take a little bit of a risk. Yeah. It's okay to say the wrong things on the phone. It's okay right. to lose a case sometimes because of bad verbiage. But what's important in all of that is that we got to do the accountability and the coaching from it. It's, it's, and I hope my team members have this feeling that they're not going to get in trouble right. when they make a mistake. Yeah. As long as, like, I always say, just justify what we were thinking. Unless you leave the water on. Otherwise, nobody feels then, like then, they're going to get in trouble. Like, what happened? I had to go to the bathroom really yeah. bad, right? Which we got yeah. fixed this week, right. by the Finally. way. So, yeah. Um, another thing is team members not knowing the score. You know, right. not knowing what, what is their role in the practice. Mm-hmm. Like I, I use Whitney as an example. Uh, her main role is to support me. So what's important to me right now is implants, correct, uh, mm-hmm. from Whitney's side. So Whitney should know how many implants are we doing, what's in the pipeline, where are we with these cases, knowing the score. You know, hygienists knowing their fluoride numbers, their perio numbers, their case presentation numbers, their reappoint numbers. You know, having individuals have certain responsibilities so they know the score. Yes, it's important for them to all know the practice numbers and things like that, but it's also super important for them to know their individual numbers. So there needs to be some scoreboard for each team member as well. And then something that's been unbelievably important to us has been developing champions who own or service or product. You know, Whitney owns implants in our practice. Uh, Liz owns sleep in our practice. Alyssa's owning uh, orthodontics in our practice. And uh, Melissa owns medical billing in our practice. Yes. Michelle owns, you know, the front office new, in our practice. And, and new patients. And M- Megan owns big cases in our practice. Right. Uh, one of our hygienists owns perio in our practice. You know, so that way there's, there's a level of ownership that Mm -hmm. uh, for growth yeah and it doesn't just have to be um i'll use madison madison owns insurance ar Uh madison owns recalls right you know that's her ownership she she is the champion of that and what i find is that everybody wants to have some ownership in something right so if you if you can really assign people and then coach them with that and then hold them accountable and then you know set goals goals and and check in regularly and and move with them yeah. you know, and, and give them a clear path, you'll see tremendous, tremendous uh, improvement in your practice. So those are some of the things uh, uh, that I kind of thought of when, when I read this article about the talent side of what Chipotle was doing to regain uh, being the darling uh, compared to, I mean, although Chipotle and Taco Bell, food's not even close. <laughs> no, but. no comparison. Well, so we've started with modernization. We just talked about uh, talent. T-Bone went into the people being the problem and the solution. And then we also have emotionally intelligent marketing. So I think this one's interesting because uh, Chipotle was saying they became stagnant and slowly lost their way. So it's like, you know, when you wear scrubs and you don't realize you're gaining weight because it just happens so slow. You go to well, put that's on why your I don't wear scrubs. <laughs> yeah. I just wear clothes that don't fit me. Yeah. <laughs> so they brought in new blood, which brought refreshment and um, enthusiasm when they did the talent. So for this one, they needed to revamp their marketing. They were doing it the old school way, the yeah. word of mouth marketing, yeah. which is how I think our office was going yeah. before the magazine. And that was what yeah. you kind of used to revamp our marketing. Yeah. You know, I think what happens is... Uh, you know, Chipotle came out of the gates as a new company, right. new practice, let's say, yeah. and they, you know, they, they treated people well. They had, they were the darling. They were new. They were novel, mm-hmm. um, and the, and they just grew from that. Yeah. But then you reach a point of saturation where the next step in growth really requires something different. Yeah. And Chipotle had, you know, Chipotle had relied on old school, traditional word of mouth marketing. Right. That's why they created Queso. By right. The way, this last year. <laughs> and now they have white queso, <laughs> yeah. I think. So, um, uh, so th- listen, word of mouth marketing is valuable mm-hmm. and it works. And right. it, quite frankly, it's probably the best. Those patients are probably the best. best. Yeah. Okay. For but sure. there's not enough. There's not enough. There's not enough. There's, you know, there, there's just not enough of right. it. Right. And when we're, we're terribly poor at how well we ask for referrals and things like right. that. So, so I came to this realization, and we're starting to do this in our practice. So if you subscribe to my Facebook page and on Facebook for our office, Raleigh Dental Arts, you'll see more and more of this coming out. And, and the, co- the concept is, is people buy from people. 
uh, I firmly believe this. Like, uh, um, nobody comes to us for sleep apnea for sleep apnea. They right. come because it's Aaron or myself or Sully. They don't, you know, they don't come to, they can learn implants from a lot of people, but they come because, you know, our, our methodology, our technique or whatever it is, kind of our really, culture. our culture fits with people. Yeah. Uh, and so the same thing, people buy from people. If you give people no differentiation or no choice, they will choose DSOs the or cheapest. Starbucks <laughs> yeah. or Home Depot. Or what they know. Or, or what's easy yeah. for them to know, correct? Right. So so I, I'm a firm believer that right now our marketing, and we have the magazine, and you mentioned that, Gilead mm-hmm. Marketing did a phenomenal job for us on the magazine, uh, and it definitely sets us apart. Right. But it's targeting certain things and certain procedures. Yeah. Um but I think our marketing has to be more people focused. Right. And I talk about personal branding a lot. Yeah. And um, and making the cu- customer the hero, not the dentist or the dental practice. And I think it also has to be very Google driven. And what do I mean by that? In Easy other words, to find. well, that's part of it. But also thinking about what are people searching for. Like right. if Meredith, if I asked you, going back to the time when you did our ortho part of our practice, mm-hmm. what was one of the most common questions patients would ask you? How much is it going to be? Great. So now let me ask you this. How many of you that are listening to this, Meredith, just off the top of her head, not knowing that I was going to ask her this, the first question she said to patients asked, how much is this going to be? Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to ask you, listening, myself included, where on your website can you get that question answered? You probably can't. You probably can't. Right. But it's the most common question we get. Right. So th- that people-driven di- marketing that I'm talking about is answering these questions. Mm-hmm. There's a website called Answer the Public. So if you go to answerthepublic.com, you type in dental implants, you type in Invisalign, and it will spit out at you all these common questions, all these phrases that consumers, that people are putting into the Google to look for the answers. And all you got to do is you take those questions and those phrases and you answer them. Uh And you put that on your website. So a QA and a video, answer common questions. In other Mm words... uh, I haven't shown you some of these, but I've recorded some of these for the office. And you should see when we yeah. made team members do right. these, right? So what? this used to be part of our non-production bonus our monthly, goals. Right. Um, and the girls would each ask a question. What do I do if my Invisalign button comes off? Right. How much is this going to cost? And I would never say the price, but I would say, you know, we've seen it around $199 a month. No, whatever it is, right? right. Or sometimes you just say the price. Yeah. Like if, you know. It starts at. I have so no problem telling somebody online that a hybrid is twenty five to thirty thousand dollars. Right. Because then that way if they read that, they know and what they the still cost. come in. <laughs> they they're know, prepared. They're yeah. prepared, right? Yeah. So so um a great book to read is called They Ask, You Answer by Marcus Sheridan. Uh, again, nothing's new under the sun. This is not stuff that I've made up myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but do make a commitment this time to make a weekly video where you answer common questions and then turn them into blogs. In other words, answer it on video. Yeah. Because then it can be transcribed. It can be turned into a blog. You have a video for YouTube. You have a video for social media. You can then transcribe it and turn that into a blog for your website. And all of these things over time will start helping in two ways. One, it'll help your SEO get better. Uh And then two, it'll help answer questions for your patients before they come in or even after they come in. Yeah. You know, imagine being able to send a uh, thing out to your patient. Say, these are the common things patients run into once they start Invisalign. Right. And it's what happens if a button pops off? What happens if a tray doesn't fit? Yeah. How to know if your tray is not fitting and moving teeth? Imagine having all of these things on your website for patients to come to. Right. Okay. So, and, and I don't think I've done a good enough job of explaining that to our team members of why right. they're doing these videos. But that's part of it. Yes. The other thing is, uh, are you capturing patient testimonials, patient mm-hmm. stories? You know, uh, there's no excuse. Yeah. I think at first people are scared to ask. They're scared to ask the uh, patients mm-hmm. to do a video. But, I mean, we've had patients who are like, let me go home and get ready and I'll come back. Yeah. Like, they feel like they're like Raleigh's latest influencer. Right. Like, they love it. And and it's so easy. Right. Okay, because he, here's what you need. I, for... For a couple hundred bucks, you can create a phenomenal studio in your practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get a ring light yep. uh, on Amazon. You've seen them. I have them all over yeah. the place. They're right. $100. They have a little phone attachment, and you attach your phone to it, and then you record a testimonial in a quiet operatory. Yeah. 
and then you just wheel that thing in there. You turn the light on so you have good lighting. You put your phone on there. You capture the audio. And if you want, for $10, you can get a long wired uh, lapel lapel microphone yeah. that plugs into your phone, and then you get even better audio. Mm-hmm. So for 150 bucks, you can have exactly what you need to take phenomenal patient testimonials. And the patient testimonials don't need to be about how great your office is. Right. They need to be about what their problem was. You know, common questions like, what, how, was, how was not having teeth affecting your life? Right. What made you take so long to come in? Yeah. What would you tell somebody else that was looking to get this done? How has your life changed since you, re, you know, straightened out your crooked teeth? Yeah. These are the kind of things that people want. Again, back to the common questions and consumer-focused marketing uh, that's there. Uh, another area that we're working on, and you've probably seen it, uh, I think Thursdays we do it as team member spotlights. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, want, I want all our customers and patients and potential patients uh, to, to know who our team members are. I want them to know them not just as what they are in the office, but also you know, what they are outside of the office. We, we again, so using that same ring light yeah. and the same phone, we just take pictures of them and we kind of, uh, we feature them. Mm-hmm. Uh, each week yeah. and then we'll just keep running you know we have 10 or 11 team members uh-huh. and we'll just keep running through them every so every three months yeah. 12 weeks you'll see something new about each yeah team well, maybe right. it'll be a, a picture of Michelle talking to a patient next time uh-huh. or maybe it'll be a picture of our assistant doing sterilization or maybe it'll be a picture of Michelle uh, at cycle bar right you know riding her bicycle yeah or whatever that is mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> so um things like that <laughs> right uh, <clears throat> I think it's also important to show your office as a fun environment. Yeah. Um, because uh, I think that patients want to, they, they like coming places where people are having fun. Right. Where, well, they see people are well taken care of. Right. They like their job. It makes them see why they're there. Yeah, and then, you know, things like when we went to play kickball. Yeah. Things like when we brought the gym to the office yeah. in the backyard. Things like when we have birthday cakes, when right. we have uh, our quarterly potlucks. Mm-hmm. All of these things... Are are opportunities to show yeah. your community that you're a great. You're not just a dentist. You're right. also a great boss. Right. You're a and great we've leader. Done, we've done things like gone on trips and mm-hmm. gone ziplining. But everything you just named didn't cost much. No, it, it we was, went and played kickball and had the best time. Yeah, we just used like, the park down the street. <laughs> we bought a ball. Right. <laughs> right. So I think a lot of that is just finding the time yeah. to do it. And a lot of times these are tied to our non, non-production non bonus. Like right. like one month if we do all the videos and the yeah. question and answers, we're going to we go. We get an afternoon and we don't g- know what it is. And, and we're going to go get our little feet done or yeah, whatever, get right? Yeah, pedicures. Pedicures. And that's another opportunity right. to showcase that, right? Yeah, and that's usually after work. Yeah, and uh, so same thing. And then, of course, your community outreach. Uh, mm-hmm. I think uh, in today's world, millennials, uh, mm-hmm. everybody likes offices. So when yeah. we do our giving smiles, we, we definitely take the opportunity to photograph it. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fortunate I have a video person, so we video it. But, you know, yeah. you guys know how to do phone. stories. Yeah. And every one of you know how to do stories and stuff. And I think, again, it, it just lets the community know that you're so much more. And uh, so uh, th- those are s- such phenomenal, simple, I- in my yeah. opinion, simple ideas that we can do that slowly over time uh, will definitively help your practice uh, attract better patients, more engaged patients, and patients that are more ready. If you go back to the answering the question part, if you, if you answer the quite most common questions and you put that in video and in writing on your website and in social media, you will get more patients that are ready to buy and ready to do the dentistry because they're just looking for places to answer these questions for them. Yeah. So once again, I think to reinvigorate your practice in 2020, we had three things. It was modernization, talent, and emotional intelligent marketing. Yeah. My last message is, listen, it's 2020. It's time for you to change and update your game. Uh, more so now with this COVID thing, coronavirus, mm-hmm. Chinese virus, <laughs> Italian virus, whatever we want to call it. Now it's American. Now it's, it's an American, American virus, right. Um, this is your opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- this is the time, this time that we're off or that we're not doing things. You know, send your team members uh, these things. What are the common questions? Can you answer them? You know, put a phone, practice. Right. Even if you don't use that yeah. video, practice just just practice being in front of the mirror and being in front of a camera uh because it's not easy uh, I mean, it will take a couple times 100 <laughs> percent. you know and and again my same message is what worked in the early 2000s or even in the 2010s isn't going to continue to work as well 
in the 2020s. Uh, BlackBerry, Xerox, Polaroid, Kodak, right. you know, all of these companies that didn't change with the times, right. they got beaten out. And so the same thing can happen in our practices. And I want, I want dentistry to be phenomenal. I love private practice dentistry. There are times where I, I dislike it, but um, it's phenomenal. And um, uh, if we at 3D Dentist or if me personally or if Meredith personally, if we can help you through this time, uh, just know that we are going to get through this. We're going to come out stronger. It might just take a little bit of time to get there. It may take us to have to change our game to get there but we will 100% get there. And I will personally be here for everybody. Our organization, our wonderful instructors, they'll all be here for everybody too. Um, we're here to help you uh, through this time. So um, thank you for listening. Please share this episode. Uh, please stay safe. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody.